Not too long ago, I was able to do a live stream with a player I admire named Mr. Durr. We had a great time and we went over the faction Tagawa in great detail. The first hour we spent talking about the faction in general, and I previously published that video separately. If you want to watch it and you missed it, there's a link down in the description to it. I've also included links to two different videos that are referenced in this video. That is my Tagawa Agricultural in three minutes, as well as my Tagawa Innovative Tutorial. But if you've already caught all of those and you're ready to see this video, here's what it's about. We're going to spend some time going into openings for all seven of the Tagawa mats. Uh, like I said, this was part of the original live stream, but I'm just now releasing it. I hope you enjoy it. What I wanted to do now, though, is kind of pivot to a mm -hmm. discussion about not we're not going to go through a 16 turn sequence for every single mat but i thought maybe we could talk about each of the of the seven faction mats just a couple minutes on each one and just mm -hmm. kind of a rundown on what your early game goals are with them what your mid game goals are with them and what stars are you maybe going um going for um so i know you're better with TTS than I am. I know there's some magic place that you can pull all these mats out of, and we can uh, yeah. we can just copy this guy here. Um, we already talked we a are... little bit about patriotic. We want to start with that one. Finish that one up once you get these mats out. Yeah, so we can talk about. I can just talk about like my favorite opening with it. Um, there's a couple different things you can do uh sort of focusing on different bottom actions but my favorite one is we already kind of talked about it is uh focusing on the upgrade star uh and moving so the engine we're looking for and this is going to be a theme between most of the mats is that i really like doing the produce bottom action move bottom action uh, engines i feel like they're probably the most uh, high scoring engines uh, so you can really put pressure on in terms of uh, your score total uh, sort of forcing players to attack you and take away your territory and triggering your traps and doing all kinds of stuff they don't want to do um, so uh, the I, we can just go through like the first couple of turns trade for oil is a pretty standard uh, first move is patriotic um, and then second turn we do move upgrade and we upgrade the move and the enlist. Uh, the move upgrade is almost always done first uh, in these sorts of openings. But uh, And then produce. And then trade for grain. And produce enlist. Oh, I like that. You get your second oil while you pick up an enlist and go to... And go to uh, five workers, and I, I assume you're taking that that power bonus off that enlist. Yes. So the re this is uh, since it's a five worker opening, you have to have some way of gaining power uh, in that the first couple of turns um, in order to be able to produce on your next turns. So yeah, I typically just take the power bonus, and I usually do uh, upgrade as well, just because uh, getting a decent amount of power is kind of a big deal uh, as Tagawa. So this is where uh, I would just do a move like this to the encounter. And uh, we're hoping to get some, basically oil, any kind of resources. Um, hey, look, we got some oil. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the two oil is fine in a popularity. Uh, and then we upgrade again. And this time we're doing uh, the produce and deploy. So we want to try and get these mechs down to a more reasonable cost. Um, uh, so then the next turn, we can produce and list again. And you don't necessarily have to produce the workers here. You can stay at five workers, um, which actually I'm just going to do that. Because you've got three more in lists. Right. Um, and then we'll probably do it would depend on if people are deploying or uh, enlisting if I feel like my combat cards are bad or I feel like I'm going to need more 
I'll just do deploy because that's more fun. And uh, get some combo cards and an oil. And you can see how the engine develops. And then for the third move, we do um, a worker like this, a worker like this, and then a character. And I would probably have placed it, the popularity trap here. <laughs> combo card trap. So that's like a very, so now you have your engine set up. You can produce another worker. Uh, to get to eight and then move them to the metal. So it's a little bit slow on the mechs, but you're gaining power in cards so that your character is uh, harder to attack and different things like that. So this is probably, this is the opening I did in the tournament um, and I was almost successful. Uh, I know somebody actually blocked me on the tunnel, so I would had to move to the, the wood and like things got kind of weird. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there's always a lot of adjustment with Chigawa, so. Um, so yeah. so basically, this this engine, it it waits on the max for a little bit, but you're mm -hmm. basically setting yourself self up to where you're moving almost every other turn, while right. you're actually building an engine, which is key. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the theme of a lot of the uh, openings I use to go. Um, so I think that's a great um. I think that's a great great opening um scott asks and uh before we get to the next mat what is mm -hmm. your proudest moment as a tagawa player that's hard i don't know if i can remember it um i know i've had uh oh i beat rusty at innovative as tagawa mechanical not that long ago which is basically the worst mat combination in the game and versus the best one Oh, and wow. like the difference in power between those two is it's just massive. So like that was very satisfying. I can't remember how I ended the game, but I remember it was very very satisfying. Um, it might have been one of those situations where I attacked him through a combat. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what it was. Um, yeah. And I remember maneuvering into a really nice position um, through a bunch of different you know schemes so that was that, that i'll just say that's uh if that's not my uh most proud moment the second one would probably be the one that you mentioned earlier in the final of the the first tournament where i got an upgrade star on like turn 13 or something <laughs> and with it's close to winning if i didn't screw up the combats you know i made two pretty serious mistakes in that game but uh if i didn't i might have actually won with tagawa patriotic so in 15 turns i was yeah, it was pretty eight. epic either way. Um, okay, so that's the patriotic board. What do, we, what do we have up next? Let's just start from the beginning. We'll do industrial. So industrial has a bunch of different fun uh, things you can do. Actually, I'm just going to do it over here. Move this stuff far away. Um, industrial and, uh, actually... Can, can we move the mat over here to Crimea's board? Is, can we... Oh, yeah. Just so for someone who's maybe not as familiar with the Mac, kind of can kind of bounce back and forth between them. Um, so industrial has a number of interesting openings uh, and a number of different strategies uh, as well. Um, there's a pretty good three worker opening uh, as well as uh, some build focused openings, um, sort of similar to what I was doing with uh, patriotic but ba the biggest advantage for uh um industrial is that you can get your mechs pretty quickly which allows you to start doing those combos we're talking about with uh ronin and shinobi and all that uh and just making yourself as mobile as possible early industrial is also a great map to like harass Crimea and Rusviet. um early on because you can just get so many mechs so quickly. Um, but uh, a pretty standard opening is again, just a move uh, like this. Um, and I'll just show the three worker opening. So we get a produce and then trade for two oil and then bolster upgrade. And you want to upgrade the move as we did last time and deploy so now when you move the next time you can grab an encounter and both your workers to the metal and start producing mechs at no power cost and uh this is a pretty good way to uh work towards getting 
a uh, a power star actually um if you focus on upgrading and uh maybe a couple more times and that's but, uh that's that's something i see people do with innovative um as well this basic mm -hmm. this basic setup especially with innovative being having trade over over upgrade right um, what uh real quickly if you were gonna what's your first few moves look like if you're gonna go harass crimea with with toka over here to this mountain Right, so in that situation, I probably wouldn't have spent that time upgrading. I probably would have just done where are we at this, and I probably would have moved. This is another very common opening. So Do just we have move. three workers. It's just a uh, move, produce, move. So this is the third turn. We're getting the encounter, and we're hoping that we're going to get some metal or uh, really just. Uh, there's a number of things that work. Um, you can even like get grain, trade for metal, uh, and enlist, and then produce and deploy on your next turn. And then if you're going to harass Crimea, you move to this wood, you maybe do something like uh, a mech after you produce uh, Toka. You would... Because uh, we, could we either... had to trade for two metal there in the middle before, so, we could, right. uh, so we could produce the mech, right? Or if we just got metal from the encounter, it's even faster. And you can do like really annoying things, like you just move your mech there. <laughs> um, that's typically not a good idea, but uh, probably a, a more reasonable uh, opening would be something like uh, just taking your workers to the metal so you can produce another mech and then produce deploy and then uh, uh, another move sort of thing. Especially if Crimea has, say, agricultural or engineering, which tend to be a little bit slower to get onto that encounter, right? Um, I've even seen some really aggressive people just skip the encounter and go straight for Crimea's encounter. <laughs> and uh, that can actually pay off pretty well. Um, it works, so... Especially uh, if Crimea is the, the biggest threat on the board, right? Especially maybe in a, a, a smaller count like a three player game or something like that. Or if you feel like yeah. you can limit Crimea, your chance of winning the, the game goes up substantially. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like that's one of the things that people always run on to side is, you know, sometimes if I just choose to slow a player down, I feel like I'm taking one for the team and just helping everybody else. But the lower the player count gets, the less that's true. Right. Right. Um, yeah, also harassing Rust Feed is a little bit more beneficial because you can just get the encounter on the way there. And, uh, like, you know, uh, whereas if you wanted to go directly to Crimea, I guess, well, you could do the same thing. I wonder, if, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody do this path, <laughs> but I feel like that's, uh, that's pretty rare. It'd be tricky to pull off, so, actually. So you build with the industrial board as Tagawa from time to time, right? Because I think I've seen you do that because build is under that movement action like we talked about. Yeah. Um, that's a little bit more tricky and that's always a little bit dependent on uh, like what you get from the encounter. Um, you def typically have to uh, be a little bit flexible based on that, but the most, uh, you typically need to get an upgrade. So, um, this oil you get from this uh, first produce is pretty important. Um, trade. Uh, so just to review, it was a similar opening to what you talked about before. You moved um, this worker over here, the character to the farm. You produced an oil and a worker. You moved. Um, you moved yeah, so depending on yeah. what we get from this encounter, generally you can just like trade for uh, two oil again. Uh, and then bolster upgrade. And you need to upgrade either build or deploy. Typically, um, upgrading build is better, just the way that uh, you end up with uh, a mech and four workers here. So you want to, instead of having to move, uh, or which way, I guess it depends a little bit how you upgrade it. So, like, you can uh, do it that way and then still move your character. So, one, two, three. I think that's actually usually what I do. Um, or you can move your character to your wood to, you know, protect it and then take the safe path to the factory. So, like, there's a lot of uh, interesting things you can do with this. 
Um, but generally, it starts with at least one bolster upgrade to get that power and to get the move upgrade. And you get that bolster upgrade usually out of the one produced to get to three workers and an oil, and then either a trade for oil or hopefully, if you're lucky, oil off of that encounter. Right. Yeah, so the encounter can really help a lot in that regard. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's basically industrial. Um, so with the industrial board, you're it's probably, there's a good chance you're going for what are considered sort of the standard stars, only just maybe build instead of enlist. Mm -hmm. And run yeah, can help kind of fill that combat gap that not getting enlist leaves, right? yeah exactly so you're typically like scrounging for power it's you're not exactly like intimidating on the board um which is why it's generally better to take the safe path of the factory to protect your wood and stuff but uh yeah in that situation you're uh trying to be as defensive as possible just being very aware of when somebody might attack you um and uh yeah so it's the factory card can help a lot and uh, if you happen to get a single enlist from something, that can also help a lot. Um, but yeah, there's also fun things you can do. Like for instance, if Crimea is in the game, you can just grab these encounters instead of going to the factory and that kind of stuff. So yeah, there's yeah. the scary thing when you're Crimea and you see Tagawa Industrial on the board. You don't know if they're going to win the game, but if they uh, they can make you lose it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So how so, about uh how about engineering? All right. Engineering is a little bit similar to patriotic actually. Um and my favorite combo is to do similarly um produce uh upgrade and move and list. Let's see. And uh it's just kind of the inverse of what Patriotic has with the uh, produce and list move upgrade. But uh, again, engineering has both good uh, three worker strategies and five worker strategies. I think my favorite is actually probably the three worker one. I think it's actually been a while since I played it. So, <laughs> um, So I, I, I'm I always conflicted about with, uh, obviously mm -hmm. with the industrial mat, you're going to go with max. I'm always mm -hmm. conflicted about whether to get a a mech when I have to go engineering, even mm -hmm. just even just one, um, because it's feels like a such a so out of your way, so little reward. You're probably not going to get the mech star with engineering. So how mm -hmm. do you... How do you set yourself up to where you don't just become an easy target because you don't have max? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. So uh, a lot of it has to do with um, getting some sort of, like at least one enlist early. I think my favorite um, strategy is just three workers uh, because the five worker one, it makes you vulnerable. You have less power. You get enlist slower. Um, and... The idea is you kind of want to upgrade so that your mechs are free. Uh, and then once you get to that point, you can start deploying mechs and you're not as vulnerable. So this is, I think, probably the map with the best three worker strategy, which I can just show right here. So um, it's similar in that like you move and then you trade for two oil and then you produce upgrade. But what you upgrade is actually the upgrade action first. And so what's your the, next what's move. What's the top row produce the, the move? Move to upgrade? Move. The upgrade. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So move first and then uh, upgrade. Upgrade. <laughs> and uh, then it, you'll end up with something like this. So you don't have enough uh, oil to uh, produce the next or upgrade the next time you produce. But if you get oil from the encounter or simply just trading for two oil is two upgrades. Um, so even if you don't get it from the encounter, you can just trade here and that's two more upgrades. So you can do your next four turns and that puts you up to the mountain right. uh, pretty quickly. So my next and upgrade is probably an enlist 
which means I'm getting right. enough food to keep moving and I'm mm -hmm. producing, upgrading, moving in list and just racing to the factory. And right. all my workers are way back here. No one wants to run all the way to this side of the board and mess with them. Right. And I'm enlisting upgrade first. So I get a bunch of power from that. By the time I get over here, I'll probably be out five. It depends on how much uh, my neighbors uh, upgrade, but it's a significant amount. You know, it makes you a lot less vulnerable. And if there's, you know, a power trap here, <laughs> this can be uh, an unfortunate combat for somebody who, you know, is not expecting it. Um, I like that. And, I've never really considered going three workers, to be honest, with uh, Tagawa engineering so do you get the do you get the eight workers eventually um it depends it really depends on the factory car it depends on encounters it depends on what you get from the uh the first encounter um and it also it really depends on what other people are doing sometimes it's not in reach uh, sometimes you can even get a mech star uh once you fully upgrade your mech your deploy action and maybe say you get a mech factory card you can very quickly deploy four mechs um, after you uh, finish enlisting and upgrading. So there's a bunch of interesting options there. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a little risky. I feel like everything, every strategy with Tagawa is a little bit risky um, because you have to kind of put your neck out there to try and gain an advantage, whether it's going to the factory or um, only having three workers or not having any mechs. Um, but yeah, this is probably my favorite strategy with engineering. I like it. You know, what's our next map? Um, we already did patriotic, right? Which is Matt number three. So we're on to everybody's favorite mechanical. Oh yeah. So this is, uh, probably the hardest combination to play in the game. It's very, uh, it's very slow. For Tagawa, it just happens to be um, the way it works for them. It's kind of awkward. Expensive. Yes. Mechanical expensive. Um, and because it, part of it is starting with uh, zero power makes getting like going straight to eight workers kind of awkward because you don't have speed. Typically, you want to kind of go straight to eight workers with mechanical because things are so expensive. But because you don't have speed, it's like you can't move your workers to where you want. So it's just super awkward to set up your engine doing that. Um, and uh, there really, uh, there really aren't that many uh, great strategies uh, with mechanical, but one of my favorites is, uh, you know, let's put this in right here. Are we over? Okay, we're over. So just so I can visualize it. <laughs> Um, but basically one of the better things about mechanical is this, this worker on the oil, it allows you to get an upgrade pretty early. So if you do move, produce, trade upgrade, um, you can, uh, do some neat stuff with that. Uh, but that's about where the nice stuff stops. Um, <laughs> yeah. And what, what would that first upgrade be? It's almost what? always move. Uh, and if you're going to make a mech, it's probably going to be just deploy. Um, so a, a very basic opening is like produce and then trade upgrade, uh, move and deploy, and then produce again. And then you just uh, trade for two metal, and you can bolster deploy. And your engine is basically set up. But it is a little bit you know, slow to this encounter. So that's one of those situations where if uh, you know, Saxony is looming, you might want to just move with, before you deploy and like all these things, or maybe take the risk of trying to get metal from the encounter. So that's a pretty standard one, but uh, my favorite one is actually similar to uh, what we did for, um, I forget which one, I think it was patriotic. Um, instead of, you can move and produce, but then you just move again to the metal. Um, so this gets the encounter more quickly. You're not worried about somebody um, 
stealing it from you. You can get a lot of nice things uh, from the encounter that sort of jumpstart your engine that might give you a more efficient path um for things you can build a building here if you get uh three resources you can build like a uh a mill and then you can uh the next time you you know you can upgrade your deploy and then you're deploying max uh mm -hmm. for two um so there's a lot of good things that can happen I mean, there two oil means i could turn around trade for two metal and upgrade deploy and then immediately make a mac um mm -hmm. yeah exactly. like you said they're they're different the various things for food would let me get a quick enlist and some power um would be really nice especially if i'm going to five workers so yeah i can see why they're uh, a lot better than just hitting alt f4 right <laughs> yeah yeah uh so the difficulty then becomes okay we're a faction that wants to move a lot and we're not building like mechanical kind of likes doing produce enlist bolster deploy it just makes sense and the thing is, if you don't deploy, so you do produce and list, move, build, you're pretty vulnerable because uh, there's no real way of doing that strategy with three workers. You have to do it with at least five. And then you're taking a while to set up that engine and you end up with like, with like two workers on the, the wood here and they're vulnerable and somebody can like steal it. Um, so it just it's complicated in a lot of different ways. Um, Oh, there's nuns in the chat. Hi, nun. Uh, but yeah, so this, it just becomes difficult. Uh, and going no max is not necessarily a great idea with mechanical. So you can't really uh, gain that way of like gaining efficiency with your engine, which is kind of what we were doing with the other maps. You kind of are forced to deploy, and then it's a little bit clunky how you move them. And, um. There are some interesting strategies where you don't enlist at all and you do bolster, deploy, and move, build. And I've actually had some pretty good success with that. That's something that I recently started messing with. Um, so you actually have a decent amount of power and you're moving and you're getting you're scoring structure bonuses and uh, all that kind of stuff. You can actually defend yourself. It is a little efficient because you're not doing a bottom action when you're uh, inefficient because you're not doing a bottom action when you produce. But um yeah it's just it's very tricky um but uh my word of advice would be just try to get creative with it yeah uh, yeah i, I mean combination like tagawa mechanical is just a reminder that at the competitive edge side is best when you're bidding and <laughs> i've got a i've got a video on on how to do bidding that covers it for uh, both online games and games around the table. But if uh, if you're at a point where your table's comfortable enough with the power of combinations, or even just has some idea of the relative power of the different factions, bidding can mm -hmm. be a great thing to start to get into because you know you yep. don't you just do random every time and someone gets to go a mechanical. Um, it's it's just it's going to be painful there's not there's no silver there's no silver bullet with a push button win game for tagawa mechanical for yeah um as much as i hoped you would have one for us i i didn't really expect it <laughs> yeah it's definitely one of those uh combinations where you kind of just you gotta take it game by game because there isn't a very clear like strategy or opening that's like better than the rest and uh yeah it's just about playing to uh the situation but uh there also there are some ways you can get like a power star with it but in those strategies where you're doing produce and list and bolster deploy you're generally just sitting in your home base and you don't have very many points and you're not really able to do anything because you're you're not on the board and uh you can't move very far so you're kind of just stuck it just, it, there's nothing good about it mm -hmm. um, when you don't have move in your engine somewhere. Um, yeah, the the next board would be the agricultural board. Yeah, um, I got a special for this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I got a. Yeah. I have a three minute video on this one actually. So we'll, oh, cool. uh, we'll have actually, to compare notes. You, uh, why don't you share your strategy first? Because I feel like yours is probably going to be more normal. <laughs> All right. So. It's not just a mill. Yeah, let me get this out of here. Not going to go through the whole thing. Uh, 
there's a, a three minute video on it in the playlist. But the basic idea, do I even know how to get oil out of this thing? I just click and drag or click and then right click. All right, trade for some oil. You move, you upgrade your move and your enlist, trade for mm -hmm. some more oil, go grab mm -hmm. that encounter. And then you pay the mm -hmm. oil in and you upgrade your bolster and your enlist. Then you uh -huh. toggle back and forth between produce, bolster, enlist, produce, bolster, enlist. You've got a trap underneath you. The downside of this is that you don't move much early, mm -hmm. but you're getting a lot of power. The power star is a very real possibility. You're getting in lists, and if memory mm -hmm. serves, you hit the um, the uh, the enlist star around oh. the the time you get the um, the worker star. As you get more workers, you're going to eventually move three of them up to this. I think it's three. You're eventually going to move, get some more oil. Hopefully you got oil off this encounter so you don't have to trade again. But you're going to move three workers up to here. I see. And then the build is going to give you your, start to give you, you know, after you've gone to five workers here, the build is going to start to give you food for your um, enlist and wood for your builds. So you're building um, and enlisting. And you don't build mechs. You don't build mechs ever. But mm -hmm. uh, it's vulnerable. You're, you're powerful, but this spot is vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, because build is underproduced, there aren't just resources sitting here. The only resources sitting are way back here. No mm -hmm. one can really get to that very easily. Right. Um, so I've had some success with it. I've won some games with it. It's... Uh, it, it, the obvious weaknesses are, like you said, Tagawa wants to get to that factory, and I don't. If I get to s I, six stars with this strat, I probably don't get farther than here or really here at the most. I rarely ever get to the factory with employing this strat. And now right. that I've talked about it, I'm, I'm going to have to link to it in the comments later. But uh, so shoot, I'm, uh, handing it over to you now. What do you like yeah. with this? Uh, there's that's I like that actually quite a bit I, and it's obviously if you get like metal or something from the encounter that's amazing because you can get a mech and then you can maybe trade for oil you know uh, for another upgrade so that can get improved a lot from a good encounter which is uh, it's my kind of Tagawa stretch <laughs> yeah. um, so this is a crazy one that I I came up with not even that long ago um, but it does the build star and the upgrade star. <laughs> Um, and it's a three worker strategy. So this is like a dirt special right here. All right. Um, the first turn is the same trade for oil, pretty standard. Um, so move and upgrade. So if you do, uh, move and build instead of enlist. As far as your upgrades, you upgrade, move and you upgrade build. So your yeah. build's yeah. only costing two wood now and you can triple move. Yeah. So the next is just to produce, and then we trade for oil again, two oil, and then we move workers. Mm. So what we really want to get from this encounter is an enlist or three grain. Um, so we can get a single bolster enlist in, and generally you want to enlist upgrade because you're going to be getting, giving yourself a lot of power doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's a big deal. But it really depends on what you get from this encounter. It kind of uh, shifts things around a little bit. But uh, the second upgrade is uh, probably bolster and build in the case that uh, you do get some grain. And then the third, and then another produce, you build a mill on the tundra. So now your engine is basically set up. And the next one is you just move, place another trap, upgrade, and then produce, build. And you want to build a mine here. Two more oil. And now you're moving to the factory. 
you got three upgrades and you're you're generally upgrading deploy uh first so that you're trying to get those free the free mechs with a trade for two metal deploy and then this is where it gets a little hairy in that uh you want to you have to since you have buildings on both your territories you got to move these guys to somewhere where there isn't a building <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's a wood tunnel is usually not contested that much uh and you can do that the same turn i think you get to the factory um and then you can continue all the shenanigans and you know there's a lot of ifs in this path to the factory but uh this is a strategy that i've actually done really well with and uh it scores quite a few points especially depending on uh what the you know the building bonus is uh, next to encounters is obviously a really good one um <laughs> but yeah this is a crazy one and if you happen to get uh the upgrade in this you can have a decent amount of power by the time you get to the factory and you can maybe even win a combat pushing somebody off of it um but uh yeah this is a really fun one so um yeah i like that yeah. that's uh it's crazy, all right. Those those are the type of strategies that uh, I think you're known for, where you look at them, and I'm sure there's somebody watching this video that's saying, "No way, he made that work." But I, I, whoever you are thinking that, I I guarantee you, if he says he made it work at one point, he did, because uh, this guy has beaten me before, um, getting permanent foothold with industrial Crimea. Yeah, right. um, and none. I know you're in chat right now. I still blame you for that. It was your fault, but Thank it was you. real. It happened, and it was glorious. So, with yeah. that, we've got the uh, the militant board, right? Yeah, this is the permanent foothold special. Then, correct. Um, actually, I, I'm going to let you take the reins on militant because I don't really have a strategy that I like that much for this map. To be honest, it's kind of one of those. Uh, I feel like it always ends up uh, just not being very smooth or like it just doesn't quite work out for me. Um, so. Let's see. Let's see. Get some of this extra stuff off the board. So, Tagawa Militant is something I've spent some time with and I feel like the payoff I've gotten out of it has not really been proportional to the time I put into it. Um, one of the things I've, I've tried is moving everything to this farm spot initially, oh, toggling back a few times between um, produce and then trade for a food and a metal to enlist, produce, trade for food and a metal and enlist. And then um, after doing that a few times, you can either... Um, you know, you can call it and at two metal and move to the encounter and hope to get some more. You can do something like this, hope to get something useful off the encounter and produce. You'll be up to three metal. Um, mm -hmm. So your next move, you can grab a mech. So go for the, basically go for the early enlists and mm -hmm. use that excess resource that you're trading off that produce to start to build up metal for that first mech. Um, the mm -hmm. benefit of that is it gets that coin enlist out really quickly. Um, coins are your friend with Tagawa Militant. Uh, the downside of it is that you don't get very many workers very quickly. And I mm -hmm. think kind of listening to you talk about two worker strategies maybe kind of encourages me that I need to revisit that as um, a possibility. The downside with the Militant board is the militant board doesn't like to do what you like to do with Tagawa, and that is the militant board doesn't like to upgrade. Um, right. It, it's it, very awkward. It really doesn't. Um, so what I've what I've tried to do, what I've experimented some with, is an opening that looks a little bit more like this, with a. With a produce. And then just you know either moving and hoping to get oil, or um, if that doesn't work, biting the bullet and just trading mm -hmm. and bolstering just to take that one upgrade on the move into the deploy. Because right. as I'm sure you know, the difference between paying three metal 
for a Mac and to metal for a Mac is just astronomically different because yeah. it's the difference be between being able to trade for a Mac and um, otherwise. Once you, uh, once you do that, if you're willing to forgo a, uh, a character move, I guess in line with what you've talked about with um, mm -hmm. three worker strats, you suddenly could set up a um, three worker engine, um, produce enough metal for a mech, and produce enough um, food for an enlist since your trade action is right over your enlist. Mm -hmm. So that's a potentially nice little uh, three worker engine, and then you can start your movements. I haven't yeah, done this much, honestly, because I've been averse to three worker strats, even with Tagawa. But um, kind of listening to you talk about the power of three worker strats, I may have to try this specifically out in some games going forward. Yeah, it's uh, I actually I feel like I could probably do some more experimenting with this, too. I haven't uh, I feel like I haven't really played it that many times, which is uh, one of the it's just, you know, it happens with almost 50 different combinations in the game. Um, but I always feel like I'm, it's not quite good enough whenever I play it. Um, even though it seems like on paper it should be pretty good, um, mm -hmm. you have deploy under move, um, and it, it might just come down to the fact that that upgrade is pretty awkward at the start of the game. Um, but I, I, it is extremely awkward to get the upgrade. But I go back and forth on it. But I, I, I feel like it might be worth it. I mean, the other thing you can do is you can just roll the dice and hope you get that upgrade off the encounter, or you get some. Um, you get three metal or something, um, but it's yeah. uh, it's the militant board doesn't want to upgrade, and Tagawa wants to upgrade. So I think the answer may just be to bite the bullet early, <laughs> um, which takes us to last and certainly, certainly not least, the innovative board. Yeah. So I actually have a tutorial video on this one as well that I did with a, a move sequence that I really like. It's long mm -hmm. and it's very specific. And yeah, I, remember, uh, I think I remember that one. Yeah, I think I sent it to you um, and early on and, and said, what do you think of this? And had you look at it kind of early in its development. But uh, I'll, I'll link to that one in this video description um, so people can take a look at that if they want. Uh, what are your... Uh, what do you like to do with this? I know a real standard one that people like to do is, let's see if I get this right. You move out, you produce, mm -hmm. um, you trade two oil to get your upgrade because trade is over upgrade and you upgrade the move action and the deploy. So your max only costs two and you can move three units then they move all three units to here, grab this encounter, lay a trap, and now they can produce, mm -hmm. get a mech, trade to uh, oil, and get an upgrade. Um, it's good. I don't love it. Yeah, same. It's, uh, it works well for getting mechs quickly, um, but yeah, it doesn't quite work in the long term, you'll kind of far be, fall behind on uh, bottom actions, unless you go, want to go for an upgrade start. But I really wouldn't suggest that uh, because of how important moving is for uh, Tagawa. But uh, I think uh, one of my favorites, it's been a while, I think, since I've played this too, but um, it's pretty, it's similar at the start. But if you go to five workers, you can do some fun stuff. So you uh, trade upgrade, and instead of deploy, you do uh, enlist. Okay. And then so produce still move, again. Still upgrade the move action, but upgrade enlist, so the enlist only costs two. So you produce again, and then you trade for grain, because this is that situation where you got to get that power before you produce again. Mm -hmm. um, so the next time you just move and enlist, and you can do... Uh, power you know immediate bonus and there's some flexibility in which thing you actually enlist um and then on your next turn you can just produce 
do grain and an oil and then move again. So now your your character's getting out quickly, and now you're gonna start making mechs. Um, and uh, yeah. And I'm, am I just not producing this oil anymore and just focusing on these? Or... Uh, well, you could, um, you could do another trade upgrade uh, mm -hmm. to do produce upgrade and deploy. And uh, this is just a pretty flexible uh, path. But I've also uh, maybe done something like this. Yes, that's also a great idea. Um, might be better, actually. Um, so, yeah, there's a couple of different variations there. But uh, Yeah, one thing I do like about Tagawa is getting the produce upgrade and leaving a single worker here. And then my mm -hmm. last two produces um, actually turning this worker into two, giving me six, and then those two into four, giving me eight. One of my favorite ways to get the worker star with Tagawa is getting the produce upgrade and leaving a, a lone worker right here. Right. Um, it's also good to get your worker star earlier as Tagawa because it gives you more turns to spread them out because it takes longer. Because um, uh, you're typically going to be like teleporting to where you have a trap and then moving from there or uh, that sort of thing. So. Um. All in all, though, Innovative is a pretty nice map because you can get a bunch of mechs, which makes you, you know, a lot less vulnerable on your path to the factory. And you can even do stuff where, like, if you get Shinobi, you can transport your production over here and then start deploying mechs here and then attack the factory with three. So there's a lot of, uh, I like a lot that. of good I stuff. Like, I like that a lot because as, you've, as we talked about early, early in this stream, one of the weaknesses of... Shinobi is you can only go so far as your character has been as opposed to rally right. where for instance a mech can bring a worker into a f combat and then the character and everybody else can follow into that combat so being able to de um, deploy mechs here on top of these workers on this mountain specifically means those are units that don't have to move say from this mountain or from this village down here to the mountain and then to the factory they're just already there i th i think that's a that's something that maybe i haven't thought about that much which i, I think that's a really good point i just remembered one thing too i do have a building strategy for this <laughs> <laughs> of course you do <laughs> way to round out the uh the video uh you have a building so strategy for every combination build that no one should build for I do not endorse what's about to happen, but but go for it. Um, it's actually not as bad as it looks on the surface, which is kind of crazy. So um, similar opening, move and then produce. Trading, upgrading, move and then build. And uh, you might see where this is going. And then on so the next now move, the build only costs three and we can move yeah. three units. So we OK. So we uh, move the uh, character of the encounter, so it gets there rather quickly. Um, and then another produce to uh, we can't wood build and this oil. turn. No, but you do have an oil to upgrade, so you can upgrade bolster and build. So now your build costs two. Um, and then after that, you can build. Probably, I don't know. I think it's a mill. I forget. It's been a while. You can build a variety of things depending on what your goals are. Um, and then uh, with one more produce and one more upgrade, you have enough wood for two more buildings. Um, so if you combine this with an enlist from the encounter and you enlist upgrade, you can very, very quickly get a power star. I think I've got it in like 12 turns with this before <laughs> because all you're doing is bolstering and upgrading and then you get the armory on top of that. You're getting two power when you upgrade and you're getting three power when you build. It's just, it's a lot of power. <laughs> but uh, then you have to consider that you have no mechs and your position on the board is pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's great, have, except for the ways it's not. Yeah. And you obviously have to move your workers again so that you can actually build more buildings. And um, so there's, you know. I, I have but, to say, when I said I do not endorse this, I just mean if you are not Mr. Durr, be careful using this strategy. I'm sure, I'm sure you could make it work, but this is a don't try this at home sort of 
right right at the end here. Yeah, this is uh, from way back in the uh, restricted section. I don't know if I've ever used this in a game. Uh, I might have once, but I can't really remember. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, well, yeah. I, we've covered a lot of ground here. Um, we've done some Q and A. We've uh, we've talked about Tagawa generally, and we've had a chance to go through the different mats. Um, I can't thank you enough for being willing to take the time to uh, to prepare for this, as in addition to just sitting down and and going through it. So, um, thank you, sir. Um, he, Mr. Durr is on Twitch. You want to drop by his stream? He streams some scythe from time to time. That's Mr. Durr um, with uh, with three R's. Durr with three R's instead of the normal one, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a pleasure. I love love Tagawa, so this is really fun. Uh, and uh, yeah, I typically only stream uh, like tournament games, but uh, yeah, I'll be around for the next tournament. All right. Uh, well, hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Um, it's been a lot of fun, and hopefully we can do something like this uh, sometime soon. So uh, I'll catch you guys later.